This is a um, <coughs> uh, work in progress. It's a remix um, for a label, an offshoot of a label called Groove Baby, a uh, new label to me, um, but they're doing quite well apparently. Um, they've sent me some parts to a track, um, quite a kind of underground techno -y track that they've, um, they've signed. So they sent me uh, four parts um, from the original track, um, which is not a lot to work with, um, but enough to give you some inspiration and to um, kickstart an idea. Um, these are the four parts they sent me. Kind of plinky plonky synth line. And funnily enough, another plinky plonky synth line. Um, this kind of glitchy uh, percussive loop. And an effect sound. So, um, what I've done, um, I've got the two synth loops and the percussive um, uh, loop and, uh, and, the and the effect sound. So I've got all four parts in here, but what I've done, rather than just using them as they are and just doing a, uh, a rearrangement of the, of the original sounds, I've messed them up a bit. So the first theme, the first synth sound I've, I've put through uh, one of Audio Damage's rather good um, VST plug-in effects. Um, this is called Dr. Device, which is um, a delay and filter um, plug-in with some rather cool features. Um, and this is the sound once I've put it through there. So I've, I've turned it from a rhythmic uh, uh, instrument um, and uh, created an atmospheric um, kind of soundscape with it, so it dots around in the in the panorama um, and uh, adds a little bit of rhythm. For the bass line, I've used a combination of uh, one, two, three uh, instances of Bassline Pro, um, playing the same sound, but in uh, uh, different patterns. Slightly different sound as well. So that's one. That's the second one. And there it is with the third one. So it's kind of bubbly, funky, wobbly kind of bass line. What I've also done as well, I've got a sample here playing um, a very low kick drum. So I've chopped that up, rearranged it, which gives me this low thudding, which again helps the groove. Now, I'd, I'd usually do this idea creation process uh, without any drums, so I wouldn't have the snare playing, I uh, wouldn't have a kick drum, um, just to try and create a groove without the usual instruments that are, that are gonna be there regardless. Um, so in order to come up with something different, I will uh, leave those out for as long as possible and try and create a rhythm or a groove uh, without drums. And then the great thing about that is when you do play it and you do put, put drums in, they kind of come in unexpectedly. Which creates a really cool groove that you weren't expecting and you didn't know about. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, obviously. Um, and sometimes you need to do a lot of tweaking to get everything to fit together properly. Um, but it's a great technique, it's a very um, inspiring way of starting a track. Um, but a lot of the time I, used to, I like to um, uh, put, um, just put a drum track down, drum rhythm down and try and create something rhythmically with a synth or effect sounds or percussion. Um, but usually I do the fun way. Uh, so the next part is um, I've got some samples from a uh, Sample Magic uh, sample CD, uh, some percussive loops. Uh, kind of glitchy, clicky kind of loops. Um, and they use the envelope uh, tool in Ableton Live again to take out some of the volume and change the start point on that clip um, to create something new and different. So this is what it sounds like with the percussion. Here's a little clicky rhythmic 
sounds. Again, it just emphasizes the two bar loop, which is the main kind of um, feel of this track. Uh, also got a microtonic, which is a great drum, synth drum plugin. And I've um, used some uh, creative delay on there, again, to give it a, a rhythmic sound. And then from there, it's just some effect sound. So it's, it's, still, a, it's still a project uh, that's not complete, um, but the main sounds, the main groove is there. Um, as I say, I've um, uh, put some effect sounds in, some kind of pads, some eerie sounds. Just to um, again lengthen the loops from making for a two bar loop to a four bar and then a 16 bar loop. So I have something happening uh, in those intervals. Uh, keeps it interesting, makes it easier to listen to. So this is the, this is the first stage. This is the, the, uh, the idea creation uh, stage, um, which is the fun part really. And Ableton Live makes it really fun because you have these. Um, uh, uh, clips and tracks where you can put these clips and so what you can do you can have all these clips playing um, but you can do things like uh, um, you can program the clips to play in a certain order so if you've got a, a stack of three or four clips uh, you can get the first one to play for a bar or two bars then the next one to play for a bar then you can have a silent one playing for several bars before the next one comes in so you can actually start arranging in a way um, before you actually start arranging um, that's what I'm talking about, lengthen, length, lengthening the loop. <coughs> if you have things happening over a long period, if you get to the point where you've got 32 bars playing and something happens in every phrase, um, you've got enough to make a, a tune and move on to the next step, which is arrangement. Now, again, the great thing about live is um, it's, uh, it's very intuitive um, towards uh, for live performance. So rather than... Um, arrange a track uh, like you would in Cubase or Logic where you'd actually um, copy and paste the loop across the board and take, then take stuff away um, so you've got your, your finished project like a sculptor would for example or uh, something like that um, but in live what you can do you can actually just um, get your um, project ready to record uh, live so you'd have what are called scenes and each scene is a different part of the track so you have your intro you have your, your, your main part you have your breakdown, you have your outro um, on different scenes. And it also set scenes up to, for um, little drops and edits and introducing elements uh, together. Um, once you've got all those scenes set up, you can just hit record uh, and then start firing the, firing the clips off or firing the scenes off and just go with the feeling and, and change things and introduce things and take things out when you feel the need to. Um, obviously being a DJ that helps a lot because you're constantly listening to other people's music uh, and knowing where things happen so you, you can put your tracks in and take them out at the right points um, so that it sounds like one complete uh, set. Um, so as you see, uh, as I've, uh, I've done here, I've hit record prior obviously to you coming here um, and recorded uh, a rough version. Um, from that rough version <clears throat> Depending on the time, I would uh, um, make a few adjustments, make a few edits um, um, before um, putting on a mastering preset onto, um, onto the master output, uh, in this case Isotope Ozone 3, using one of the, 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 the staple mastering presets on there um, and uh, bounce it down to audio. Um, then I can you know, play it uh, on my radio show, for example, get some feedback from there. Um, try it on different systems, see how it sounds. Um, once I've got a general idea of what it needs, um, I can then go to the next stage, which is the mix down. Uh, and we'll save that for another time.